Dipti and welcome to my channel Life Admin 365 and welcome to today's video. Today's video is a meal prep video and I am sharing with you my family's weekly meal plan. I planned meals for this week based on what was in my refrigerator or freezer. I wanted to make sure I use up everything before I could step out and do my groceries. So keeping that in mind, I came up with this meal plan. Most of my meal prep starts the night before. That's the time when I soak lentils and beans for the upcoming week. Tonight, that is Saturday night, I'm soaking 2 cups of moong dal in 4 cups of water, followed by 2 cups of chickpeas or kabuli chana in about 5 cups of water. And before going to bed, I'm taking out previously prepped and cooked cabbage bhaji, urad dal, pancakes and masala cubes. Because these are the things that I want to use for tomorrow's prep. Pancakes are for boys breakfast and for our breakfast, Milind is going to make upma. After good night's sleep and delicious breakfast prepared by Milin, I'm ready to start my meal prep. Rinsing soaked moong dal and roughly portioning in two halves. Pressure cooking one half portion of soaked dal for one quick whistle and turning off the heat and releasing the pressure within five minutes. Doing this will ensure that the dal does not get overcooked and has a little bit bite remaining to it. Transferring the cooked portion to a container and only when completely cooled, refrigerating it. Grinding the second portion of moong dal along with three to four green chilies and one heaping teaspoon of ginger to form a smooth batter. Transferring the prepared batter from the blender jar to a glass container and refrigerating it until I'm ready to use which probably will be on a Tuesday evening. By the way, I did the grinding and transferring work whilst the first portion of dal was pressure cooking. That way I didn't have to idle my time and my prep kept moving on. Now that the pressure cooker is freed up, I'm getting soaked chana or chickpeas in it. As mentioned earlier, I started with two cups of dry chickpeas and upon soaking, they have more than doubled up. I'm adding about a half a teaspoon and yes, half a teaspoon, not one teaspoon. Pressure cooking it on medium heat for up to five whistles. While chana is pressure cooking, I'm preparing roti dough enough for the next three to four days. About eight cups of whole wheat flour gives us dough that lasts for good three to four days, assuming I'm making about eight to ten rotis per day. Back to chana. Once five whistles are up, turning off the heat and letting the pressure release naturally. Then transferring cooked chana to freezer safe bags and once they are completely cooled, putting it in the freezer. I have portioned the chana into two portions. One portion is for this week and one for a later time. By this time, it's close to 12 and I'm ready to prepare today's lunch. Yesterday night, I took out masala cubes, pressure cooked urad dal and cabbage bhaji. So all I have to do is prepare dal makhani and rotis and heat up the bhaji and lunch will be ready. Starting with dal makhani, heating masala cubes in a pot to which I'm adding about 1 tablespoon butter, sauteing it for a minute, then adding cooked and thawed out urad dal and mixing well. Adjusting consistency with water and heavy cream and bringing it to a gentle simmer. Lastly, garnishing it with chopped cilantro. And while dal makhani is simmering, I am rolling out rotis and roasting them on tawa. Towards the end, that is when the last few rotis are remaining to be roasted, I am reheating cabbage bhaji and lunch is ready to be served. Yummy dal makhani, cabbage bhaji and roti. After lunch, Milind has cleaned the dishes and I've loaded them in the dishwasher. And after taking a break for an hour or so, I'm getting back to the rest of the meal prep. Most of the afternoon prep is focused on making burger buns and pav or dinner rolls. Sometimes I get into the mode of making bread, especially when I feel creative. Sometimes it's sandwich bread, but most often it's burger buns of pav for vada pav, dabeli or pav bhaji. I stopped baking bread a very long time ago, but during COVID lockdown, I had the perfect opportunity to get back to baking bread and relearning and perfecting the art. Getting back to baking bread. First, I'm starting with making burger buns because I'm planning to use them for tonight's dinner, which is beyond meat plant-based burgers and fries. And look at these beauties. Aren't they just perfect? Simultaneously, I'm making preparations for making pav or dinner rolls. Making yeast bread from scratch with traditional recipe requires a lot of rising for the yeast to do its work. So when the dough for the buns is in its first rice, I'm gathering ingredients and proofing yeast for dinner roll when the burger buns are formed from the dough and on the second rice, I'm covering and keeping the dough for pav for its first rice. And when the burger buns are baking in the oven, I'm forming the pav. I have made a double batch of pav but I'm not going to bake these today. Instead, I will freeze them in portions so that when I'm ready to make pav bhaji, I have them on hand. 
On the day I'm making pav bhaji, I will thaw them out for about 3 to 4 hours and bake as per recipe instructions. I believe I'm making pav bhaji on a Friday or Saturday and that's when I'll share the recipe. With that said, I'm done for the meal prep for the week. I don't have veggies to prep because I want to use up previously prepped and frozen veggies or other food that I have already made in the last week. Once I get done with those things, I will go and do my groceries and I'm sure next week I'll have a lot of veggie prep to do. Anyways. I'm sharing the link for burger buns and ladi pav recipe in the card above and in the description box below. So do check it out. These two are my no fail recipes for making these breads at home in case you're interested. With that said, let me share with you a few meals that I made during the week. First on the list is cauliflower bhaji with moong dal amti. I have both the preparations going on simultaneously. Moong dal varan on the front and cauliflower bhaji on the back burner. To prepare varan, I am preparing tadka of mustard and cumin seeds in hot oil followed by adding curry leaves. Then adding chopped onions and giving it a quick stir. Then I am adding finely chopped green chilies, turmeric, red chilli powder and cumin coriander powder. Giving everything a good stir. Then adding a teaspoon of garlic paste followed by half a cup of tomato puree. Stirring everything well, adding in crushed kasuri methi, cooked tur dal and water. I had cooked this dal yesterday as you saw in the earlier part of the meal prep video. Mixing well and then moving the varan to the back burner where it can come to a gentle simmer. On the front burner, I am placing pan for making cauliflower bhaji. Preparing tadka similar to that as of varan. Mustard seeds, cumin seeds in hot oil, onions, finely chopped green chilies and garlic paste. Then adding tomato puree turmeric and red chilli powder. Mixing and sorting for a few minutes. To this masala, I'm adding previously prepped and frozen cauliflower. The key to making sabzi with frozen veggies is to avoid, is to avoid, is to avoid thawing them out. Take them out from the freezer maybe 5 or 10 minutes before making the sabzi and then add them to the prepared masala. Going back to the sabzi, mixing it well and adding in salt and after a good mix, covering and cooking for 2 to 3 minutes. Uncovering and then adding in a handful of frozen peas. Mixing well and covering and cooking for another 2 to 3 minutes. Uncovering, mixing well and checking for doneness. And looks like it's done. Transferring prepared varan and sabzi to a container and quickly rolling out rotis. On to the next meal of the week. I am preparing dhokla from previously prepped moong dal batter. I had shown how I prepped this batter in the earlier part of the prep video. When I am ready to prepare the dhokla, all I have to do is get water heating in the steaming pot. Then I am adding about half a teaspoon of soda to the batter and mixing it well. Then quickly oiling the steaming plate, which ideally I should have done it before adding soda. Pouring dhokla batter to the oiled steaming plate Tapping the plate to remove any air bubbles and placing it in a steamer. Steaming the prepared batter for 12 minutes in the steaming pan and then when the plate is cool enough to handle, removing the dhokla cake and cutting it in diamond shapes. Then repeating the same process for the remaining batter. Lastly, seasoning the dhokla with mustard and cumin seeds, hing and turmeric. Serving it hot with ketchup and green chilli chutney. The next meal on my menu is pav bhaji. About 4 hours before our dinner time, I'm taking out previously prepped pav doughs. I'm placing the frozen dough in an oiled baking pan and after 3 and a half hours, dough has risen up perfectly. Placing the dough baking dish in a 400 degree preheated oven for 17 minutes and getting bhaji ready. And look at these gorgeous soft pavs. They have come out perfect. Only thing remaining is to butter them up and lightly toast them before serving. Bhaji is easy because all I'm doing is reheating previously prepped and frozen bhaji. This is the bhaji that I don't reheat in microwave as microwaving it separates the bulk of the bhaji and water and the bhaji doesn't come together upon heating. Reheating frozen pav bhaji bhaji in pan on stove and not in microwave. This is the only way the bhaji comes together like it would when you make it fresh. And in no time pav bhaji dinner is ready. Sprinkling of chopped onions with the warm pillowy bread and we are ready to eat. The last meal that I'm sharing with you is chana masala. This is also very easy to make because I have everything pre-prepped. Using masala cubes from the earlier meal prep and cooked and thawed out chickpeas from this week's meal prep. Very easy to make. All I have to do is add extra garlic paste, a little bit of chilli sauce, a little bit of chana masala and in goes the pre-cooked chickpeas. That's it. 
Simmer it for a little time. Adjust the taste with salt and pepper or red chili powder and boom, it's ready. While the chana masala is simmering, I'm preparing roti on the side and in no time the meal has come together. That's the beauty of meal prep. A little bit of time up front to prep and dinner comes together in no time. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, do give it a big thumbs up and share it with your family and friends. And if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to my channel for more such meal prep recipe videos and day in my life videos. Take care y'all. See you in the next one.